Shalom, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Ba'ashem Rechach Sadash La'aywalam Yom. I want to give double honor to all the elders and apostles of Yasharala. Strong Shalom to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth and sincerity. I want to also give thanks to all the men on the highways and the byways doing this work diligently, making their calling and their election sure. This brother Kazaka coming back at you with another quick video, a swift reading through Psalm chapter 128, you know, just to get some milk and some meat from this chapter. You know, it's great to read over the Psalms daily, you know, to give oil to to your uh to your lamp, you know, to keep that fire burning. Hopefully this is edifying. We're gonna get right into it here over this reading. Psalm chapter one twenty eight in verse one it says Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. So if you want to be blessed, you got people out here saying, I'm blessed and I'm this, I'm that. You know, in order for you to be blessed, you got to fear the Lord. In order for you to be blessed, <clears throat> you got to do what the Lord said. You got to walk in his ways, right? You know, you got to fear the Lord, man. The fear of the Lord is the first step of being accepted of him, man. And you read that in over in uh, Syrac, Ecclesiasticus, right? Ecclesiasticus chapter 19. If we can start at verse uh, 18, it says, The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. So guess what, man? You know, in order for you to be accepted of your house by Hashem Yahweh you got to first fear him, man. You got to first fear your house. You understand? So going back to that Psalm chapter 128, Psalms 128, verse 1, blesses the it blesses everyone that fear the Lord, that walketh in his ways. So you show the Lord that you love him, that you fear him, that you honor him by walking in his ways, by doing the commandments, man. You know, doing the commandments, by following the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, by showing your faith, by doing the work, man, by speaking good tidings unto the meek, man, because the Spirit of the Lord is upon you. By going out there, you know, uh, and tending to the sheep, tending to the flock. That's you showing the Lord that, number one, that you fear him because you're doing what he said. You understand? And then, number two, that you love him. You understand? Because you're doing what he said. Period. You know, that's how you show the Lord that you love him. You can't give him a hug. You can't give him a kiss. You can't do nothing to express the, uh, to the Lord that you love him other than, you know, just do, uh, walking in his way. You know? The fear of the Lord is the first step of being accepted of him. you got to fear him knowing that he kills. He makes alive. He wounds and he heals. It's a reason why you need to fear the Lord, right? Let's get this. Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and 39. It's a reason why you need to fear the Lord because he's out here killing and he makes alive. He wounds and he heals. It says, uh, Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See, now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound. And I heal. Neither is there any that could deliver out of my hand. So when the Lord say, your time is up, best believe your time is up. There's no ifs, ands about it, man. You got to fear the man. You got to fear the being that can kill the spirit and the body. Not the man that can just kill the body, man. You know, you have to understand what's going on. The Lord is out here killing and he makes it alive, man. Esau, the so-called white man, all he is is the Lord's sword. Anybody that's out here being put to death, it's the Lord that's ordaining it. He's the shot caller. He's the boss, man. He's the main godfather. The Lord is. Yahweh is, man. And he got hitters out here that are, that don't miss. He got death angels out here that don't miss. You understand? He sent a hit out. It's going to get done. So that's why you got to fear the Lord, man. Let's get another precept to back that up. Syrac or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, verse 14. It's tons of them that back it up, but, you know, I'm going to just get these two. Syrac, chapter 11, verse 14, prosperity and adversity, right, when you up and when you down. Syrac, chapter 11, verse 14, prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Verse 15, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him, right? You know, so... You gotta understand it's the Lord that's controlling these things, man. You know, it's the Lord that's doing this and he's worthy to be feared. He's worthy to be feared over any man, over any other power, over any other 
false god. You understand? The Lord is worthy to be praised, man. He's worthy to be feared. Because he pushed it to death out here, man. You know? The Lord is a hitter. The Lord is a man of war. He's a powerful, terrible power, man. He loved Yasharala and he's a terrible power. A lot of people thinking he's soft out here. The Lord is a man of war. You understand? He's a terrible power. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. The Lord is a man of war, man. What happens in war? Bloodshed. You understand? Death. Battle. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord is a man of war. He's a terrible power, so he needs to be feared. You need to fear the Lord. You will be a fool not to fear the Lord, man. You need to tremble at the power of the Lord. He's a terrible power. And you can read that over in here. You can read uh, it's several verses on it, but you can read it over here in uh, 2 Ezra chapter 16. And start at verse... Uh, so I can't, let me get it. Uh, is that 2 Ezra 16 I'm looking for? So I can. Uh, that's, that's not what I'm looking for. He's a terrible power. Um, uh, Deuteronomy 7. Verse, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 21. It says, Thou shalt not be a frightened at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible, right? So you read up, this is the Lord telling you, no, you can, don't be afraid of these nations. You understand? I'm the, I'm the one that's going to dispossess them for you. I'm the one that's going to destroy them. I'm going to make these nations be in fear, make them realize that they're nothing but men. You understand? This is what the Lord is going to do to these people. And this is what our people should be asking. I know uh, David is asking, right? But our Lord is a terrible and mighty power, man. You should fear the Lord. You understand? He's going to make these nations know that they're nothing but men. And you can read that over in Psalm chapter 9. Psalm chapter 9, uh, we can start at verse 19. <laughs> you need to fear the Lord, man. Psalm chapter 9, verse 19. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight, right? Verse 20. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men, right? They need to know that they are nothing but men and the gods. The powers that they have created are nothing. Because we know that what? Psalm chapter 96, verse 5. Psalm chapter 96, verse 5 says, For all the gods of the nations are idols. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Right? So our one true power, our Lord, is the supreme power that does what he pleased. Right? Psalm chapter 115, verse 3. Our Lord made the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. So back in Psalm chapter uh, 128, you uh, you need to fear the Lord, man. Let's go back to that Psalm chapter 128. Psalm chapter 128, verse 1. Blesses everyone that feared the Lord, that, uh, that walketh in his ways. So you are blessed if you fear the Lord and walketh in his ways by doing what the hell he told you, man. The Lord is worthy to be feared because he pushed it to death out here. You're going through things, it's the Lord that put you through it. Why? Because he wanted to. Who are you to ask the potter? Anything. You're clay. You're clay in the hands of the Lord. You understand? You're like a river and he turneth you whithersoever he is pleased. You know, so fear the Lord, man. Inevitably, you got to fear the Lord in this thing. You got to fear the Lord and have faith that he'll put your ass to death if you constantly dwell in wickedness, man. Because we know that the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Right? Continuing on, verse 2, it says, For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee, right? So he said, uh, you know, blessed is he that feareth the Lord and walketh in the Lord ways, right? Because if you, once you, uh, once you work and, you know what I'm saying, you, you work by the sweat of your brow, you shall be, you shall, uh, you know what I'm saying, eat, and you shall, um, you know what I'm saying, uh, benefit from the labor of your hands, right? You know, you're going to be blessed. Whatever you do, you shall be blessed while doing it if you fear the Lord, right? Just like I love bringing out Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. You know what I'm saying? You, you meditate on these scriptures day and night. Walk it in the ways of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. You will have good success then, right? You know? 
So the Lord is saying, if you fear me, you will be blessed and happy shall you be. You understand? Happy shall you be, you know, um, and well, you shall be too as well. You shall be healthy, you know, you shall be able to, you know, move around and, and do things, you know what I'm saying, that other people cannot do. You're going to be, you'll be blessed by fearing the Lord. You understand? You'll be blessed by fearing the Lord. Because he's, first off, he's worthy to be feared. And then secondly, if you don't fear him, you are a fool. Do you know what the Lord did unto Pharaoh? <laughs> how, the, how the Lord is going to uh, demolish America? Do you know what the Lord did unto the, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? Do you know that the Lord is a terrible power and he rules? He rules with a sword in one hand and olives in the other? Because he got peace on one hand and he got the sword on the other. Where do you think Esau get it from? Esau didn't make that up. How he got the eagle holding arrows in one hand and and uh, and the olive branch. I mean, how the eagle and holding one um in one claw, the eagle is holding uh, arrows, and then in another claw, the eagle is holding a, a, a olive branch. Right? Where do you think they get the idea from? You think it's just they just made it up? No, it's the Lord. He deals with balance, right? The Lord will have your ass in peace, or the Lord will put your ass to death. It's that simple. The Lord deals with balance, and unjust balance is an abomination with the Lord. You understand? It's an unjust, an unjust balance is an abomination to the Lord. So if a man fear the Lord, he will be blessed, and he will eat. He will eat the food of his labor, man. He will eat, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and flourish and thrive from from the work that he do with his hands and from the things, you know what I'm saying, that he do in his everyday life. Just by fearing the Lord, he's blessed, man. You know? Psalm chapter 128 and verse 3, continuing on, it says, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the size of thine house. Thy children, like olive plants round about thy table, man. So what is this letting you know? You know, you fear the Lord, you're going to be blessed, man. Talking to the men right now, you fear the Lord, you'll be blessed. You will have a fruitful wife, a wife that benefits you in every category, a wife that, you know, before you even ask for something, it's already done, you know? You know, I'm thankful for that wife. Like, my wife constantly comes to my mind, you know? Before I even can ask for something to drink, she already got it. I'm like, how did you know I needed something to drink, you know? But you fear the Lord, you get a fruitful wife. You know, it's just, she'll be like a fruitful vine by the side of your house, like a like a vine filled with nothing but but beautiful edible berries, man, or uh, beautiful uh, apples, or or you know something a vine that is fruitful, man. You know, that'll be a beautiful wife by your side, man. Not only will she be beautiful on the outside, but beautiful on the inside too as well, man. Where it counts the most, she'll be most beautiful at in the inside. You know, if you just trust in the Lord. A lot of men out here, a wicked woman is given over to a portion of to a wicked, a wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man, like the scriptures say. You know, a lot of men out here go through women problems, it's because of you. A lot of women out here go through men problems, it's because of you. You're not fearing the Lord. You're not putting your trust in the Lord, ultimately. You're not turning back to your heritage, your nationality. Remembering who the hell you are. You understand? You're not doing that. So it's the Lord that's giving you over to what you attract. If your inside is attracting negativity, all you watch is negativity. All you think about is what's outside of the scriptures. All you think about is profane things that's outside of the temple. You're going to get what's outside of the temple, which is negativity, which is a relationship that you don't want. But if you trust in the Lord, if you fear the Lord, He will give you a, a righteous or a, He'll give you a righteous husband or a righteous uh, wife. You understand? If you're a man, He'll give you a righteous wife. If you're a woman, He'll give you a righteous husband. You understand? He'll give you people that are trying to better their lives in order to do what Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah says, man. In order to be forgiven by their father, man. The ones who have the spiritual fortification set up by Yahweh Shemiah Shah in order to first off not only help themselves but help you out 
in a situation where you are lacking. So it's people out here, man. The Lord got his elect, got his chosen out here. You understand? They are fearing the Lord, and they're going through a fruitful life right now. You understand? They're going through a fruitful life. No matter what they're doing, they're having success in their life and things like that. And not only are they having success, but they also give it all honor and glory back to Yahweh Hashem You understand? And some people out here having a fruitful life in Esau's kingdom. But every time I take a breath, it, it actually reminds me of, of how I'm not truly living. Imagine the kingdom of heaven. Some things you can't even fathom. Some things you can't even consider. The kingdom of heaven got so many beauties in it that you will be overwhelmed. You can't fathom it. That's how I know each breath I take in this captivity is not truly living. I'm doing what is necessary to survive. In the kingdom, I will be thriving because in this time period, Lord willing, I will be doing what is necessary to thrive in the kingdom of heaven. What is necessary to thrive in the kingdom of heaven? What is necessary to even get to the kingdom of heaven? That's doing this work now. That's keeping this faith now. That's doing what is necessary to finish this race. So if you want to have a fruitful life, if you want to finish this race, if you want to have children that are plants, you know what I'm saying, that are, that are olive plants that are, and like me personally, I don't like olives, but some people love olives. Olives, you know, they are, it's, a, it's good nutrition. You understand? It's a good nutritional plant, you know? Some people like olives. Me, personally, I don't, like I just said, but this is going into how your children will be good. You know what I'm saying? Your children will be smart. They will be blessed. You know, they will be, uh, you know, um, you know, favored. A lot of people will say, hey, you're favored or, or you're anointed or you got, the Lord is dealing with you or it's something about you or, you know, this is what people will say about your child because ultimately the man is fearing the Lord and the Lord, you know, deals with the man, then he deals with the woman and, you know, it's an order to things, you know, you know, it's an order that the Lord deals with, you know. Just like um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 says, man, it's an order to this thing, man, you know. But that fruitful wife, if that's what you want, you got to fear the Lord and do what the Lord said, man, walk in his ways, right? If you want children that are smart, that are wise, and they will listen to what you said or what you say, then you got to fear the Lord, man, you know. The Lord will get your household together, man, you understand? You gotta focus on fearing the Lord and getting your getting your walk straightened. You understand? You you don't you can't be going all over the place in the Lord. If you turn back to the Lord, the Lord will actually set your household in order. If you're a widow, wicked ass Eve that don't want to listen to you right now, if you focus on yourself and you focus on you know fearing the Lord more and you focus on you know doing the work more and keeping the faith more, showing your faith more, the Lord will get your wife together. The Lord will get your household together. But you just have to be right, man. By the man, the whole, a whole household will be saved. You understand? If the, the if the man is, you know, um, doing the work honorably, you understand, doing the work consi uh, consistently, you know, trying to teach his wife, but the wife don't want to listen to stuff, the, the, the Lord will save the whole household just because the diligence of the man. The Lord will do what he wants, you know? So ultimately, I'm going into how you got to fear the Lord in order to be blessed. The fear of the Lord is being blessed. Being blessed is having the fear of the Lord in you. You understand? The fear of the Lord will give you a fearful wife. The fear of the Lord will give you children that listen. You understand? The fear, the fear of the Lord is what ultimately blesses, what ultimately gets you accepted of him, man. Let's continue on. Psalm chapter 128, verse um, 4, it says, uh, hold on. I'm, I think I want to get some precepts out for that verse 3 real quick. Yeah. If y'all know, if y'all know anything in the scriptures about what a woman is, you know you got to go to uh, uh, Sirach chapter 25 and 26. You just know that. Like, if you're looking for anything in the scriptures about, you know, um, in detail about 
you know, the woman, you got to go to the to the book of wisdom. Now, you got some in Titus, too, as well, and, and in other areas, but Ecclesiastes chapter 25 and 26 give you, like, an in-detailed, you know, in-detailed description of what's going on, you know, with the women. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me see here. What am I looking at? So he said he going to... You know, if you fear the Lord, you'll be blessed, and he'll give you a wife that is like a fuelful vine that's on the side of your house, right? Let's see here. Right here, Sirach chapter 26, verse 1. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be doubled. So you fear the Lord, and you'll be blessed. You know what I'm saying? You'll be blessed. Blessed by fearing the Lord, he gives you that fruitful wife. All right, cool. Now your days have doubled. Not only will you have good success, not only will you uh, eat of the fruit of thy labor, I mean, yeah, eat the fruit of thy labor, not only will you be doing that, but your, the, the, your number of your days shall increase, right? Verse 2, a virtuous woman rejoices her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace, man. Verse 3, a good wife is a good portion which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Let me highlight this, man. So that fruitful vine, that fruitful vine, that fruitful wife is given to him that fear the Lord, man. So I write chapter 26, verse 3, A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. If you got a wicked-ass Eve out here, it's because you don't fear the Lord. If you got a wicked ass Eve out here, it's because you're not doing enough. It's the Lord that gives out the righteous or the uh, the virtuous wife or the virtuous husband, man. You go through things in this world, man. It's because you're not fearing the Lord. You go through bad relationships. Get right with your hawa by Shem Yahweh man. You know. Verse four. Let me highlight this, man. Whether a man be rich or poor. If he have a good heart towards the Lord, he shall at all times rejoice with the cheerful countenance, man. Whether you are rich or whether you are poor, you shall rejoice with the with the with the beautiful countenance, man. With the cheerful countenance, you will be you know ecstatic at what the Lord. Uh, you'll be ecstatic at the ecstatic at the situation that the Lord got you in, whether you be rich or whether you be poor. You understand? It be days where I don't have a dollar in my pocket, but I'm thankful that I have my wife, I have my child, I have a roof over my head, I can get to work, I got food in the refrigerator, you understand? I can go out and speak the word, I can make videos, I got oxygen in my lungs, you understand? I'm not a rich man. I'm not a rich man at all, but I'm cheerful and I'm content, you understand, with what I have in this wicked-ass life. I know... Life in the kingdom of heaven will be way better. You understand? It will be way better than this. The kingdom of heaven, which is going to be on earth. This is not no Christianity bullshit that they, they try to tell you that you got to die in order for you to get to the kingdom of heaven. No, man. The saints shall take the kingdom. You understand? Now, this place, the kingdom will be right here on earth. Just like the Lord's prayer says, you know? But you got to be content with what you have, man. You know, you focus on the Lord and you trust in the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all things will be provided unto you, man. Go back to that Psalms 128, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, uh, you gotta understand what's going on, Yasharala. You know, you going through shit out here with through relationships and shit like that, you better test your fear of the Lord. You better see where you at. You better see what you're doing in life. You understand? Because a virtuous man and a virtuous woman is given to them that are that fear the Lord. It's a portion of it's a portion to them that fear the Lord, man. You know, you got a wife that's listening out here, Jake. You tell her something. You ain't gotta tell her too many times. She ain't got no back talk for you. She know when you're serious. You know what I'm saying? She know what you need before you even ask for it sometimes. Listen, man, you got a virtuous wife. It's something you're doing right and it's something that you need to continue to do, or the Lord will take her from you, the Lord will take your kids from you, the Lord will take your household from you, the Lord will do what he please if you forget what the hell you got this state from, what the hell you got this state of peace from, if you get, if you forget where you got that state of peace from and you start going off and shit, the Lord will take that state of peace from you and give you destruction, 
give you pestilence, give you nuclear missile fire. You understand? To tell you on Psalm chapter 128, verse 4, it says, Behold, that thus shall the man, Salakia, behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The man shall be blessed that feareth the Lord. That's what I've been bringing out through the scriptures, man. You shall be blessed with a virtuous wife if you fear the Lord. You shall be blessed with a virtuous husband if you fear the Lord. You understand? You shall be blessed with virtuous children if you fear the Lord. You understand? Because it all stems from fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the first step of being accepted of Him, man. You know? Behold, that thus, uh, Psalm chapter 128, verse 4, once again, Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord, right? That fear of the Lord. Let's get this precept real quick. Because those that fear the Lord have much wisdom, have more wisdom than those that, uh, you know, don't fear the Lord. About know some breakdowns and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what this scripture about to bring out to us. Well, uh, Sirach chapter 19. Here we can start at verse, uh, we can start at verse, um, uh, we can go to verse 20. It says, The fear of the Lord is all wisdom, and in all wisdom is the performance of the law, and the knowledge of his omnipotency, right? Uh, continuing on, um, let me see, uh, verse 24. This is what I'm looking for, right? It's like it. I'm looking for uh, Sirach chapter uh, 19, verse 24. It says, It says, He that hath small understanding and feareth God is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgressed the law of the Most High. So what is this saying? If you have small understanding, meaning you don't know that many breakdowns, and you you just strong on milk right now, and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? You got small understanding. You can't really go into Daniel and do no breakdowns, or you can't really go into Revelation and do no breakdowns, but you fear the Lord, you are better than the one that have breakdowns, that can break down Daniel, but transgress the laws of the Most High that transgress his commandments, that transgress the statutes. If they do that but know the breakdowns, you are better than them. So you got to understand that the fear of the Lord has a great weight on it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is wisdom. You understand? So Psalm chapter uh, 128, once again, let's go, let's finish this out. I know it's a short... It's a short chapter, but once you actually go into it, I can I can keep going for, you know, 30, 30 40 more minutes on this, man. Because there's constant precepts coming to my mind, things like that. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you, when you're in the spirit, you're in the spirit, man. You will go for days on stuff like this, man. It's only six verses. Six verses. But from the scriptures linking up and things making sense and the spirit supping with you, you will go for hours off of six verses. But I'm, you know, for time's sake, I got to cut it short. So Psalm chapter one twenty eight and verse five. Now it says, "The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life." Man, I'm gonna say, "You shall see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life." This is talking about in the kingdom of heaven, man. You understand? This talking about in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. All the days of our life in the kingdom of heaven shall be good, man. You understand? We shall live forever in the kingdom of heaven. We shall have incorruptible bodies. But also, you know, if Yasharala, you know, the remnant, which they will, they will fear the Lord until the end. They will be willing to get beheaded for this truth. Their life, you understand, their life is going to be good. Whether you like it, accept it, believe it or not, man, you might think they're going through turmoil because they got to go through concentration camps and getting beheaded for the truth. But if you ask them, they'd be like, listen, this is the Lord's will. Whatever is brought upon me, I got to take cheerfully. Just like Sirach uh, chapter 2 brings out. You know, this is our lot. You know, but the Lord is going to be the one that bless us out of Zion because that's his pit. Jerusalem is the pit that he's chosen. Zion is the people that he have chosen. He have chosen Yasharala. He's in the midst of Yasharala. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. You know? Verse 6, it says, Yeah, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace 
upon Israel. This is going into that kingdom of heaven, man. You shall see your children's children. You understand? Thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Yasharala, man. Peace upon Yasharala. All you have to do is fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh All you have to do is come back to your heritage, your nationality, and actually fear the Lord because it is the first step of being accepted of Him. Hopefully, this was edifying Yasharala. Fear the Lord, it goes a long way. You understand? Seeing the Lord goes a long way. It helps you out because it's going to be the Lord inevitably that saves you out of the time of atrocities that we're coming into. That the times, the time of desolation, pestilence, famine, Jacob's trouble that we're coming into. Yasharala, you need to be equipped with this truth. You understand? You need to be equipped with the fear of the Lord. Being equipped with anything else will leave you out open, out in the open and unaware. You understand? Being equipped with this truth, you shall be covered in this tower of defense. You shall be covered in the fortifications of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua against this wickedness. You understand? Fearing the Lord is the first step of being accepted of Him once again. Hopefully, this is edifying. Once again, I want to give all honors and glories to Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. Bashem Wakakadash Laiwalom Yum. The water, Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. The water to the angels that's recording every single thing we do, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Overcome, endure, Yasharala. Remember that you are chosen. Remember who the hell you are. Shalom. On to the next one. Peace be unto you.